I tell you, I got a young man that's, uh, that's going to come up. He's going to talk to you. Very, very inspirational. He's a senior at Lynchville Christian Academy. I've been knowing him ever since he was about 11 or 12 years old. Um, he was a, a star football quarterback last year with Linfield, but went through uh, a, a tragedy. But you know what? Nothing, nothing can hold you down unless you want it to hold you down. Nothing can keep you from achieving your dreams unless you want those things to keep you from achieving your dreams. So I asked my good friend, and I think one day he's going to be a, a, a famous football coach or whatever he decides to do, he's going to do that. Without any further delay, Alex Louise. Good morning. Like I said, my name is Alex Ruiz. I'm a senior at Linfield Christian High School right now. Um, just to give you a little backstory on my story. Um, so almost to the day a year ago, uh, we're playing Ontario Christian at Ontario Christian. And it was October 6th, so we're coming up on one year. And I got tackled uh, the wrong way. I decided to keep the ball on a read option. And I dislocated my knee. And my knee, so I fell. And um, I heard a pop. I was on the ground. There was about three guys on top of me. They all got up kind of screaming. And I was like, I didn't really know what happened. I was like, oh, I probably like tore my ACL or something. And I decided to lift my leg in the air. And it formed a hard right angle, like directly at my knee. So what happened was my femur and my tib fib practically went like this. And it was just dangling there by tissue and skin and so they took me to the wrong hospital um, I sat in the wrong hospital for hours and I finally got transferred to the right hospital and they had surgery and they saved my leg um, but there's a lot of dead dead muscle and dead tissue and I stayed there for about six weeks and then I ended up going home in November right before Thanksgiving um, and then they kind of gave me the option, like, you can keep your leg, and you can let it heal, and it would be a longer, a lot longer process, and my foot wouldn't work. Like, I had no feeling or anything below my knee, no movement. Um, so I decided, I talked to, I talked to a lot of people that I met that I've missed, like, missing limbs, like, in war and, like, Marines and stuff like that, and they just kind of, like, they really inspired me just to, like, take the option of amputation and just like they 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 gave me like a first hand view of like all right life really doesn't suck like it's still life like at least you're still breathing so i decided to go along with it and um february came along and i had the amputation and then really just rehab since then just it's been a long process i've just had acl surgery and um yeah i just had acl surgery 2 months ago about 2 months ago and so I'm really just working on that now. I'm walking around pretty good and moving around pretty good. Hopefully I'll get running pretty soon. But yeah, that's a little backstory on what happened for me. Um, but really what I want to talk about is to redefine and persevere. And I feel like everyone finds their identity in something, something they're good at, your job, your sport. And my identity was in football and baseball, but mostly football. Um, just kind of the athlete. I walked around school and I was the quarterback or I was the shortstop. And that's how people just kind of knew me. My brothers went to Linfield and I was, my freshman year, they all knew me as like little Nico. And then as I got playing, it was, all right, you're Alex. Because, <laughs> um, yeah, I just kind of became the guy. Um, football was my everything. I, like that was what I set out to be was go to college and play football. Um, I was on my way there. And just laying in that hospital and just realizing, like, damn, like, I'm never playing football again. And I'm never going to be able to, like, do the things that I, I'm like, I'm a, I'm a junior in high school. I'm 16 years old. And these doctors are coming in here asking me if I want to amputate my leg or not. And I was like, how do you ask a 16-year-old that question? Like, 
I sat in that room for days and days and weeks and weeks just contemplating like like this isn't fair like how how is any of this fair like how do you how do you make the decision at 16 like I have the rest of my life to live like am I going to regret it when I'm 30 am I going to regret it when I'm 20 and am I going to regret it right when it happens like am I going to wake up from surgery and am I going to regret it so come February I woke up all my family was there um and that's like, that's like the biggest thing for me was having that community around me in my school. When I was in the hospital, uh, it was homecoming week, and I had so many people come in and bring things in just to like hang out and like mess around in the hospital room, mess with my nurses, and just have fun. And I think if you surround yourself around the right people and the right positivity, like you can get through anything. If you have the people that have the same mindset as you and the same like goal as you, like so many people want to get me back on the field like at, for senior night. And that's like the positivity that I need. Like, obviously things have changed. Like I can't go out with my friends and do certain things like the high schoolers want to do, like run around in TV houses or whatever. <laughs> and that, like, that's been the hardest thing, like seeing them go out to the beach and it's like, nah, like I'm good, I'm gonna stay home. Like my leg's not feeling right today. And like no one really gets that, like especially at 17, 16 year old, like no one gets like, your, what, you, your, leg, your leg doesn't feel right today? Like, but it's just redefining yourself and who you are. Like, my injury isn't on a pedestal of anyone else's like emotional inju injury or physical injury. Like, the things you guys go through and the things that you guys go through aren't any any less or bigger than what I've gone through. Everyone still has the same feeling in the end of that lost hope and that lost like that emptiness in your soul. Like, what am I gonna do next? And if you can have the mindset like there's always a next step. That, that's the best thing you can have. Having that, all right, what am I gonna do next? Like, what's my next goal? And especially training at Linfield with Coach Burns, having that next step mentality is something he always taught us, like that next play, that, like having that short-term memory loss. If you make a mistake, you always have another play. And I think that's just correlated into life in the best way that, like, possible. There's always a next step. Like, I can always find something else to do. There's always the next sport. There's like there's so many sports now for everybody. Like, obviously football isn't really an option, but I can golf. If I want to bowl or something like that, like there's always the next step. <laughs> and I think that's just the main thing in life is finding that next thing that's coming. And especially having the people that want to get you there and having the connections to get there. Like the amount of people that I've met through this, I had I was in the hospital watching Sunday football, and my favorite team is the New Orleans Saints because of Drew Brees. And they were playing the Chicago Bears, and I saw this guy go down, their tight end. He snapped his leg. Look, it looked similar to mine, but like I was just like, oh, whatever, like, oh, okay, it's just another injury. And then I, my brother texted me that night, yo, you see the Saints game today? You see that tight end that got hurt? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, he had the same injury as you. And talking to my doctors, out of all the sports injuries in, the, like, in America, the odds of having the torn artery, the ligaments, the blood circulation, it's 0.06% of injuries lead to that. I was like, well, that's kind of odd, <laughs> like within two weeks. So I end up coming in contact with him in November, December, something like that. And we talk every day. We talk every day. It's some days it's man, this sucks. Like he's not playing anymore. And he's thirty and he can talk to a seventeen year old and I'm I'm seventeen and I can talk to a thirty year old and have that connection and have that like even though me and him gone through the exact same thing, I can still talk to people that I know have gone through tragedies in their life, like adults and even people my age, it's just harder to talk to people my age because no one really wants to talk about it. Like, I love, I love, I love it. People come up to me just randomly, like, out and about, and they're like, what happened? <laughs> just like, that's a very blatant question. And I love, I love messing with them. I'll be like, what do you mean? <laughs> they're like, like, what happened to your leg? I'm like, what, what, do, you, what do you mean? It's, it's there. So I just love like breaking that ice and just making people feel more comfortable. And I think if you can get people feel more comfortable around you, you can open up and have real life conversations. Especially at our generation, no one wants to have those real life conversations. So if we can dig deep and have 
man to man, like, man, this is the stuff I'm going through at home. This is the stuff I'm going through, like, with my friends. And just have that sincerity and that, like, so many people, so many people ask, how are you doing? But they're really not sincere. They're not sincere about it at all. They're just, they just want to, like, if I were, if someone were to ask me that and I'd go, you know, I'm not really doing good. Let me talk to you. They'd be like, oh, okay. I was just asking you a question. So if we can get past that and get like the ice broken and have a real conversation of how people are really doing, I think it would save a lot of people going through that depression. I've never really struggled with depression until now. Like sitting in a room with nobody there, I would scream and scream and scream like, F this, F that, like I'm so over this. Like, And everyone hits that point in their life, they're like, what the heck is going on? And I think if you can have that, those people around you and have that positivity around you to, uh, at least I'm still breathing. Like, I may have lost a leg, but I didn't hit my, like, there's so many football injuries now that lead to head injuries. Like, I can still think straight. I can still function. I'm not paralyzed. And I think if you have that mentality, okay, well, there's somebody out there that has it worse than me. Some people have died. I'm still here. My mom can still see me every single day. My mom, I, I have a full another respect for everything, for walking. Being in a wheelchair is the hardest thing like for me. Like some days I have to go in a wheelchair to school. I hate it. I hate it. But walking through the door and seeing my principal, Miss Wilson, every single day, how are you doing? Are you okay? Do you want to come talk to me in my room? No, I'm good, thank you. Just starting your day off right and just focusing on the people that love you and truly care about you and get you to that next point in your life to where you feel like you can succeed most is where you have to get. Thank you. Let's give him another round of applause.